Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to look at the tree support function in the latest version of Cura. Now, I am running the stable release of Cura, not the beta version here, just as an FYI, and I'll have links to it below. So, one of the first things we need to do is add the tree support function in. So, to do that, we're going to go up here and click on Preferences, then Configure Cura. And then we're going to go down here to settings, as you see here. And then under filter, we're going to enter TRE. And you notice it brings up all the available parameters for the tree function, tree support function, that is. Just select them all, click OK, close, what have you. As you see, I've already installed them, obviously, on mine. So to access them, we're going to go over to the control pane, and you notice they'll be under the experimental tab. If, if you don't see them there, make sure you click the chevron so the chevron is pointing down and not to the left, and they should be available. Now, the other thing I want to point out is when we begin looking at um, using the tree support function, we have to make sure that the regular function here of supports are turned off, or this will override the tree function, or at least it, it has for me. And so I'm going to scroll back down here, and let's take a look at some of these. Now, most of these I think you can use pretty much out of the box like they are without getting too fancy. So the first one is the uh, support branch angle, and this is the angle of the branch. And right now it's at the 40, and I've pretty much left this as it is. I think you could probably vary this between 40 to 60, but that's my personal opinion, and 40s worked well. Um, I've tried some stretching it to 50. I didn't notice much of a difference, so I've just left it at 40. The next one is the tree support branch distance. Now, this one I do change a little bit. I sort of vary it between about 4 and 6 millimeters. This is the separation of the branch where they touch the models. So if I, if I really believe, like in this case, I could actually go and get away with 6 because of the, the angle of this uh, torus here. So to go ahead and slice it. So now I've moved it out 2 millimeters from being four millimeters to six millimeters so we'll get a slightly different a slightly different tree model if I'll spit that out and one of the things to note this uh, using the tree model does take a lot of computing power to process you'll notice a significant time difference in the slicing activity versus that of using the standard support models now so you see it slightly changed the model over here on the way it intersects the top of the torus uh, and again, pretty much six for this is, is pretty good because really I could probably get away printing this without supports at all. And I actually have. So the other piece is the branch diameter. So if we look at this over here, this is the tree support branch diameter. So this is going to be the thinnest the branch is going to come to intersect our object. And so pretty much I've left this at two. I think probably going below two is possible, maybe one. But I think this is where you're going to sort of make a logical trade-off between the number of branches and, and branch distance and how much you want the support to intersect your model. Uh, again, I found two have been pretty good. I really have never changed this or saw the need to. Uh, the next thing is the uh, tree support branch diameter angle. Wow, that's a mouthful. This is the angle, the branches diameter, as they gradually become thicker towards the bottom. An angle of zero will cause the branches to have more uniform thickness over their length. A bit of, ang a bit of an angle can increase stability of the tree support. I pretty much left this the way it is, so I really haven't changed this at all. Um, and again, if you want to play with it, you probably can. I think, um, again, fives worked for me. I'll leave it at that. Uh, the next one is tree support collision resolution. I'll spit that out. So this is the resolution to compute collisions with to, to avoid hitting the model. Setting up a lower, uh, setting this lower will produce more accurate trees that fail less often but increase slicing time dramatically. And let me tell you, um, they are definitely correct about this. This can really add to the slicing time. And one of the things to know, notice, we have a bit of collision over here. So um, if we change, if we say up this to say to 0 0.4 and do the... Um, 
uh, we'll go ahead and re-slice this it, by having increased this. Um, what we'll see is, again, it's going to take some time to go ahead and slice. So you're watching it slicing here. And again, uh, not too bad since we've, we'd already sliced it before. But you'll notice now that we actually have a little bit of an odd shift in the uh, tree structure itself versus the uh, zero point two. So again, I found zero point two to be, uh, you know, good. So I really haven't seen a need to have to change that. So I just kind of leave it set the way it is. So I'm going to go ahead and just change this back to zero point two and then have it uh, re-slice the model, if you will. And, and again, this does take a bit of time for it to go through and process. And since I've sliced it, it does seem to do some pre-caching of slicing. So I don't really understand what it's doing in the background as far as uh, slicing, but it does seem to do something. Okay, so I've returned this back to point two. And you see the tree structure has changed back again over here. So this is rather interesting. And again, point two I found to be pretty successful. The other piece is wall thickness. So this is pretty much as it as it sounds. Is this is the thickness of the walls, and again, you're going to want to kind of match the thickness. Not kind of. You're going to want to match the thickness of your walls to a multiple of your nozzle. Now the next thing is is the tree support wall line count. Now I'll spit that out. And again, this is pretty much as it sounds. This is the number of basically skins or or the number of walls this will create. So we're going to create one wall at basically 0.4 millimeters or one nozzle width, if you will. So anyhow, these are the basic parameters of this. Now, one of the pieces to also keep in mind, if we go up here, if we're not in the layer view, um, you won't be able to get to see uh, all the tree here. So you want to switch to layer view if you haven't already and if you haven't noticed that. And again, you can kind of go through with the different layers and see how the buildup happens here. So with that, um, I tell you what, let's go ahead and print this. And then once it's printed, we'll meet back at the bench and talk a little bit more about how it came out. So let's head over to the printer. <laughs> Okay, welcome back from the time lapse. So before we get into taking a look at this guy, one of the things I want to mention is I actually made this video twice. So the first time was with this guy. And as you can see, it didn't work. And the pieces, I knew it wasn't going to work because in Cura, it was very clear that the tree structure had not formed correctly or Cura had not created a correct tree structure. Now you notice that there's a little bit of difference. So I changed up the model a little bit to get this. Uh, I don't know why this didn't work as it did, but it simply did. Now I'm going to run a little bit of a time lapse up here in the corner of this printing. And so you can kind of see it fail. But the, the piece is, it had some sort of problem with this STL. So when I went back, and actually unfortunately I deleted this STL, but when I recreated it, I made it a little bit bigger over here. I created this in OpenSCAD, uh, this Taurus design, and it worked. I don't know why. So the uh, pieces the tree support is still experimental in cura and i would probably treat it that way so you may get some funky uh results from the tree support so just be aware of that if you're using it you might hit some problems okay that being out of the way and i think that that might be finished um what i'm going to do is take a look at this now when i went to remove it from the bed uh, this just popped right off, so I wanted to try to lift the whole thing up so you could see it better. Uh, but you can see the tree, the tree section, how it actually goes up and around and up to this piece. So I, I was very careful. This is a very fragile structure because it's only a single wall and there's no infill in this at all. So it just kind of winds it, its way up, which is very interesting. 
And there, there must be some interesting math behind the creation of this and how it determines it. Because one of the things in Curie, you'll notice that it shows red down here and up here where it's going to put support. So actually, I want to do this live and sort of pop this off. Now this is printed in PLA and uh, that came out pretty good, but it did leave some residual, which is probably going to take some tools to clean up. This is... Uh, I'm not so happy with this. I'm just kind of looking because the same same structure sort of exists on this one is right here. Where this is fairly well bonded to the um, torus shape itself and I think would actually create some problems. So let's try, see if I can snip it off with some straight cutters. Yeah, that's not too bad, but it still has, I don't think there's a way to fully remove that. Now that's a little bit better. You might be able to clean that up. Uh, but again, you know, I think this is 50-50. I think this is maybe a little bit better than the standard, but I think, again, this is still experimental in my book. So anyways, wanted to share this with you guys. Sometimes it, it won't work. Sometimes it might work. How good it's going to work. Uh, again, I'm giving Cura a thumbs up because they're making, you know, inroads to some interesting places where basically it's been the realm of Simplify 3D and Cura is still for free. So, again, big thumbs up on that. But it still, I think, needs to, you know... Uh, it needs some work and they're on a journey to a destination and they quite haven't made the destination yet but again big thumbs up to the Cura team so anyways if you found this interesting hit the thumbs up button if you want to see more stuff like this on Cura hit me up in the comments below what would you like to see because I did this based upon a viewer comment swag shop will be up there subscribe button will be over there and we'll see you guys in the next video cheers all please click like below and subscribe to the channel